Melissa Fung is a Canadian journalist, author, and human rights activist. In 2008, while on assignment for the CBC in Afghanistan, she was kidnapped by Afghan criminals and held hostage for 28 days. Following her release, she wrote a best-selling account of her experience titled Under an Afghan Sky and has subsequently spent her time advocating for human rights and especially women's rights in Afghanistan. In a world of finite resources, why should Canadians allocate aid to Afghanistan over other nations that are in need? What do we as a country owe the people of Afghanistan? We went in more than 10 years ago with a commitment to bring stability and security so that institutions like schools and courts could take root. They destroyed a lot of the infrastructure we helped build in Kunduz. John Sopko is the U.S. Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction. He says Kunduz exposed the weaknesses of the Afghan government and the army. They went after the government officials. They destroyed schools. They destroyed clinics. The Taliban went after the women. They went after the children. In light of the deteriorating security situation, coupled with the chronic and endemic corruption which plagues the nation, is Afghanistan hopeless? I don't think you can say Afghanistan is hopeless. Not hopeless when, when I talk to women and girls, um, especially girls who are in school and women who are learning how to read and how to write and coming into the world. Um, and that's where I see hope. What would you tell? What would you tell uh, an Afghan girl? who is going into school and wants to be a doctor when she grows up. Why you don't want to help her country. Why you don't want to support her teachers. As you know, the security situation over the last year and a bit has deteriorated significantly. And that's because after the, you know, the pullout uh, of NATO troops, Afghan troops sort of had to assume uh, responsibility for their own security. To get him out. Already, 150,000 Afghans have fled this year. They're leaving a country that seems more dangerous every day, even though we fought one of the most expensive wars in history to make it safer. Um, in terms of Afghans who were killed and injured last year, uh, were far greater than the year before. And I think that's largely to do with the fact that Afghan troops, the Afghan, the, AN, the ANSF, uh, Afghan National Security Forces, um, have sort of taken over responsibility for security from the NATO troops, the US troops who have pulled out. As you know, you know, Canada's troops pulled out years ago and we have we don't have we don't even have trainers there anymore and sadly I think what we're seeing is that the Afghan troops are not quite there yet it takes a long time to build up capacity um, and we can't expect that just because we were in there for 12 years 13 years um, that that Afghanistan is really ready to, to kind of stand on, stand on its own. Um, and I think they, as much as they want to, they, Afghans themselves recognize that they still need the support of the international community. Why should we care? So what about our promise to the people of Afghanistan that we would help them get back on their feet? What will happen to the progress we've helped Afghans make in the last 10 years? The schools we've helped to build, the teachers we've helped to train, 
the girls we encourage to go to school. Some will argue that we have sacrificed enough. Why should we owe Afghans anything more? After all we have sacrificed, and after all we have given, how do we know when we are done? We won't be alive to know that we've succeeded. It, this is generational. Development, what people don't understand is that just because we were there for 12 years, we expect that it's going to be as modern as Canada is today. It is not. Development is generational. So what we're doing now, we're still planting the seeds at, you know, in the hopes that in 25 years, Afghanistan may be much better off than Canada. We don't, we don't know that, right? We've made the investment. And that's all I'm saying is that you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't really just walk away.